Liam, congratulations on your appointment. How are you feeling today? Yeah, really excited. It's nice to be back in this room. Uh, it's a club that I love. Um, so for my first uh, permanent manager's job to be at this football club is something really, really special to me. Uh, it gives me a lot of mo motivation to be successful. You know, and um, there's a lot of uh, friendly faces at the training ground. I've known Louis a long time as well, so that helps in terms of getting to know everyone, the acclimatisation period. But for me, I'm just really, really excited to get going and, and make this club, get this club back to where it was when I was playing, which was a full house, which was in the top league. And there's no reason why we can't do it uh, in, in my tenure at the club. We saw you at a game last week, I think it was, watching on. Can you just give us a little bit of an insight? as to how this, this came about? Yeah, it's, I think it's been really good because it's been a really long process in terms of, I think, myself and Tan have had numerous conversations. We've got to know each other really well. I've had fantastic meetings with Ajun. And, and the great thing for me is we're all completely aligned in how we can bring this club success on and off the pitch, which I think is really important. So it's been a great process because I think it's given me clarity that this is the right role for me. And I think it's given the guys clarity that I might be the right person for the job. So I've been absolutely delighted with it. What do you make of the, the playing squad and everything behind the scenes that you've got at your disposal for the job? Yeah, no, there's some top players here, some really, really good technical players um, and some really, really good homegrown players as well. We've had success here in terms of being promoted from League One. Uh, my job is to lift it, you know, is to get us to the next level. So for me, it's a nice mix of players. I want to get to know them as quickly as possible in terms of day to day, um, what makes them tick. But um, I'm really, really confident that we can be successful in the short and long term. What's the first thing on your to-do list? First thing on my to-do list? Um, well, that's a difficult question when you walk into a club. Uh, f for me, it's just setting down what I'm about, what I believe in, getting to know the players, getting to know the staff, and uh, making sure that w I think we've got the perfect game on Saturday. I don't think there's a better mental test than going away to Millwall, and I can't wait to see the players' mentality, the players' character, and it will give me a lot to learn in terms of how we move forward. What are the early differences you know? Well, I think the first thing is that the ownership situation. Um, I came, I was the first player that the Allan family signed, and at that point we were on the brink of liquidation, you know, and the club's been through some difficult times. So to see the change and the stability now that Ajin and, and Tan and the guys are bringing makes me really, really excited for the future of this club. So that I think that's the biggest asset for the football club now you've got a really passionate owner who wants the best for the football club and someone who's willing to invest to get this team at the very highest level. Does the, the, the passion of the owner, the ambition of the owner, does that in turn then pass a bit of pressure on to you as the, as the manager? I think there's pressure in every single manager's job in the world and there won't be anyone who puts as much pressure on, on, my, on me as myself. You know, I want to be successful. So in terms, of, in terms of that, that's no issue. I love passion. I think without passion, you can't achieve anything. And I know the owner here is, is definitely passionate and loves the game, which I think is a real positive for the football club. You obviously went through a lot at the Derby County in a short period of time. How much is that kind of giving you a good grounding? And what yeah. have you learned from that that you can take into this room? I think, I think we, myself, as assistant to Wayne and what Wayne went through, and then as an interim manager at a club that just come out of administration, I think I did 20 years worth in, in three years, you know, in terms of my experience. So I'm, I feel completely ready for this role. I feel it's come at exactly the right point in my career. And, and all of those difficult experiences make you stronger and make you a better person. And hopefully I can use that in this job here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how much Liam has, has impressed you? It sounds like he's very hungry and ambitious, and he, he definitely talks very well. Yeah, I mean, um, it's. I, I thank you for for you know bringing me in. Also, I thank you all for coming in. Um, when I first met him, he, his passion just overly impressed me. To be honest with you, but. It was not. This is not about passion. It's also knowledge. It's also being ready for the job. From the first minute, he he, he gave me that, you know, you know, a perception of ready f for for us. So that kind of made me feel so good, and and so comfortable. And further on, we we digged in his philosophy and discussed many times about how we can improve the club, how we can, you know, achieve our goals, how we can be part of our goals. So from the first minute, I think it was he was exceptional and, and different than other, all the other candidates for us. Yeah, and obviously, they have mentioned it there. He's got the experience of the club. He knows people around the place. He knows what it's like to take 
football or be part of Hull City going up into the, the Premier League? How crucial was that in your decision process? I, I mean, look, he he he's he served the club as a player for for a long time, um, but that shouldn't that wasn't the only con, you know like uh, consideration and, and deciding point for us. I was from, like I said, I, I was very impressed, so was the chairman, from his game philosophy, how detail-oriented he was, how genuine, and, and we always wanted to, to, to align ourselves with, uh, with, with, with a, a, a manager who is up-and-coming, and then he's one of the up-and-coming young managers in the, biz, in, in the football industry at the minute that impressed us along with all the others, aside from all the others. So, um, f like for me, his philosophy was the key point. If, if I, and so as the chairman, we, in, we had a genuine conversation and, and everybody was from the first minute so ready to settle, you know? Liam rightly says that the, the club are ambitious, the owner obviously is ambitious. What is the remit then for, for Liam's time here? Is, is, it, is it to try and get the club up into the, the Premier League? Um, before that, came, may I just go back to your previous co uh, question? I feel like I left a little bit blank. Um, we respect him being in the organization, and we want to grow with the people who serve this organization. But at, at the same time, as a manager, his 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 I you know philosophy was more dominant than him being a player for the club. So he came together. It was even more more like. He, 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 the, the chemistry that that we, we were looking for anyway. So same thing with Louis here is is he's, he's, he's our captain. He's home like he's from Hull. So we're trying to bring the unit back. And so is the chairman. So excited to have such talented people who had served to club in the past coming back again. So we're all excited, static about this in terms of. But go on with the yeah, next. Yeah. So, so what's the treatment? Is it to the, get off and get back home? I wasn't trying to, you know, get you out. out of, no, if it was, it'd be better. yeah, uh, it was just, you know, natural, I should say. But uh, look, we are ambitious. I'm never gonna come in front of you guys and lie. So, so is the the chairman. If you don't set the goals high, uh, you can't reach reach them. So, for us, promotion is always uh, in our dream. So, uh, for our goal was when we took over to establish a family, and then one dream. So the dream is still going to the Premier League, so and the promotion. Whether how f how soon we can reach, is should be the question that I should be answering. That's why we appointed Liam, and then that's why we expect him to be, expect him to get us there, and in, in a timeline where everybody f you know feels comfortable and good about it. You know, in the end, promotion is always. We have to set the goals to, to achieve it. You know. Gaffer now? Absolutely. First word I said to him was morning gaffer. How much are you looking forward to working on Yeah, very much so. Um, we had a, a brief conversation this morning um, and yeah, he just outlined the way he wants to work and, and what he expects from us. Um, he's made it very clear that all the lads will, will know their roles from day one and, and what's required. Um, it's fantastic to have somebody that knows the club inside out. Um, We've had Dorse recently, um, again another another sort of person that knows the club inside out, and and that's great to sort of get from from what they've had experience wise over over their time at the club and and pass it on to us guys. But no, as a group, we're um, very excited to work um, to work with a new gaffer. Thank you. Just missed that. Hi, Liam. Good to see you again. What was it about the, the job in the club that attracted you? I think it has to be a combination of things. Um, firstly, obviously, I've got a great affinity with the football club. It's a club I love. It's a club that I have some great times with. But you can't that can't be the only thing that you take into account. I think in terms of thinking logically about the job, it was the chemistry between myself and Tan and, and the chairman in terms of um, what, what they want from a manager. I think if you're working for a club where your philosophies aren't aligned, then you're always, it's never going to work. Um, when, as soon as we had the first conversation about the way I want to play football, about the way I work, about the, the principles, and not just football in principles, but values for people, we were all completely on the same page, and, and that's key for success. So for me, I feel really comfortable coming here. Not comfortable in an, in an arrogant way, but com comfortable that if I do the job in the way that I believe I can do it, that we can all be successful together. So I think that was the biggest uh, point for me, which is very important for a young manager, is to be fortunate enough to find the right people who respect the way that you work. You've got quite the challenge ahead of you. 
every every job, every manager's job is a challenge. Every, you ask the other 91 managers in the Football League how difficult the job is, but having a challenge is a great thing because for all of the adversity that you're going to go through in the difficult moments, it makes the, the success even better. Um, and yeah, there's, it's a challenge, but every single manager in the Championship is going through the same challenge. You look at the points total in the, in the league, uh, everybody is so close and my job in the short term is to try and tip the balance in our favour in, t- in our fundamentals and our basics in the way that we work and in the long term is to imprint a long term philosophy and vision of, of, of the football inside so I'm really looking forward to it From what you've seen in the squad so far are they good enough to rise? For sure for sure every team in this championship in this league are good enough to rise and, and this is a really really talented group of players I was fortunate enough this morning to work with a, a large group of players and we, we went through a, a few things but the level of intensity the level of quality was really really high if you can add a little bit of organisation and, and principles and a bit of consistency to that you can go really really far in this league and we've definitely got the ingredients here for success and have you spoken yet about whether there'll be opportunities to strengthen in a couple of months? Yeah, I think I think we, for for me the most important thing, and and this is a really key message that I want to make for every single player that's in the building. They're the most important people. The first thing I need to do is get to know them. Um, my job is to win games, but it's also to improve players to win games. So there's it's a clean slate for every single player at the football club, and I want to find things. We myself and Wayne last year at Derby, we had to find gems or polish gems, and that's the it's the most pleasing aspect of coaching is to improve players, and and that's my biggest focus here at the moment. I think it's massive, uh, massive for me and vital probably for every every manager in, in, in the, definitely the Premier League and the Championship to have that time uh, when you're a new manager to instill your philosophy. We're, we're going away to a fantastic training camp in Turkey, which we, we've, we've discussed. Um, and then I'll get to know the players even better. And I think that will be a real test in terms of how quickly can we imprint our, my identity on the team in a, in a short space of time. Thank you. Liam, good to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, about you personally, first of all, what does this opportunity mean to you? It's a great, it means everything. Um, I, I think it's well documented for a long time now about my passion to become a manager. Um, I did, I had a feeling I'd be back here one day. Um, I've got goosebumps talking about it now, to be honest with you. So, look, my family is so pleased. Uh, you know, they sing the song, My Nan is from Hull. It's really, it's a really nice feeling because it was a year ago this month she passed away and I was in Cottingham Cemetery just five minutes from here and she was uh, in the crematorium with, um, with a whole shirt. You know, so that's what it means to my family. But that gives me so much pride and gives me a lot of motivation to do her proud, you know, in terms of the way where this club can go. So I'm fully motivated and I'm really excited to get going. What would you then be saying to you now about this moment? I'd, well, I told my mum, she started crying. Uh, so I think my nan would be really tearful and hopefully she's up there smiling down because I know it was a big dream of hers to see me in that dugout and hopefully I can do her proud. We've heard how you've impressed Tan and the Ola. Mm. What did you say to impress them? What did you pitch to them? I think I think the most the best way that you get on with people is not to pitch, is to be authentic and have a conversation. And and what was great about not just from my side but from Tan and, and from Ajin's side as well was they made it clear what they were looking for. And then what was great for me is I could show that. It's not that I'm just saying words that and just to impress. It was a really natural conversation. And not just about the job, but how you get on as people. We've spoken, I, Tan said a really funny comment to me yesterday. We're talking about getting to know me. He said, I've not done an X-ray on you. I've done an MRI on you. I know everything about you. And that's a great thing because then you're open with each other. And I'm really, really looking forward to working with those guys and looking forward to working with the players as well. Working with Andy Dawson, if yeah. you understand it, first of all, what's it going to be like reuniting with, with him? It's been brilliant. I've enjoyed today. We, we trained this morning, um, and again, for me, he epitomises what this football club should be about. And there was absolutely no chance at the prospect of me being here as manager that Andy Dawson wouldn't have a role, a huge role in, in the coaching staff. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to working with him. He's still quick. He's showing me a bit of pace in, in his running today, um, and I'm really, really looking forward to working with someone who's just as passionate about the club. Can you clarify what his role will be? Yeah, he'll be one of my assistant head coaches. Um, I'm on the verge of bringing some another head co- uh, assistant head coach in, but it will be a joint role. Uh, and Dorse deserves that for the work he's done in a short space of time with this group, but also for, for the amount of effort and quality that he brings to, to a group. So I, I'm really, really going to be leaning on his experience in this role. Who's the other one you're bringing in? With you? um, I can't say at the moment. It's just because it's in terms of contracts and it's a naughty question. Um, but no, it, hopefully it'll be announced really, really soon. 
time, you know we'll always ask. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I, well, one I had to ask, and you might not be able to answer it, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Justin Walker at Derby, who you've worked with previously, is he? Could be a possibility, but again, there's nothing nothing finalised, you know. Um, it's something, your staff is really, really important. Um, and I've been really fortunate over my career to know a lot of really, really good coaches in the game. And, and when the announcement is right, we will make the announcement. A bit like the top question you asked earlier, it's probably hard to pin it down, but what are the biggest things you've learned about this kind of role and about yourself in the experience you've had so far? Um, I think it's, you learn about yourself as you go. So I had a wonderful experience working with Wayne Rooney at Derby in the most difficult circumstances I think you could imagine in terms of the administration, the, the, the amount of players we had, um, what was happening behind the scenes. You learn in adversity and you learn in difficult times. So. I'm resilient, um, I'm a nice guy, but I'm driven and I, I'll demand high standards because you need high standards if you want to get and you want to achieve success. You've been in person to see this team win and lose in, in recent weeks. What are the biggest strengths you've seen of the squad and, and equally what are the biggest <coughs> developments that you, you see in there? Yeah, I, I saw the, the lads play at Rotherham. I thought they were absolutely magnificent in that game. There's a high technical level of players throughout the whole squad. There's, that's not in question. I, I'm enjoying watching them play and, and what, what the lads have tried to achieve in the, in the philosophy of play, which is quite aligned to mine. I think for me, it's just raising the consistency levels and making sure that our basics are done right. Defend. It's all the things in the championship. You can talk about playing expressive football and attacking football, which is what I want, but without a basis, you know, without a basis in the fundamental of defending your goal. And I haven't said, I'm not saying that hasn't happened in the past. I'm saying they're the things that I'm going to focus on in the short term to make sure that we can get a consistent level of performance in, and, and hopefully turn that into a consistent level in results. And as far as the challenges you've mentioned about defending Andy as a former defender yourself as well, mm. um, how do you look at that side of it and, and what's the biggest challenge there? Well, I said to the players this morning, every single player, regardless of your position, when you don't have a ball is a defender. It doesn't matter if you're a number nine or a winger, you're a defender. And it's that mentality and that togetherness that you need in the championship. So, And, when, and also when we do have the ball, the goalkeeper's an attacker. And, that, and that's the mentality that I want to bring to the club. It, it, it's easy to point fingers at, if you're not scoring goals, people point fingers at the strikers, or if, you, if you're conceding goals, people point fingers at the defenders. It's not about that here, not, not the way that I work. We're, we win, lose, draw together as a team, and everybody needs to contribute to that. You said about the philosophy, and fans always ask, what's mm. the style of football? <laughs> what is the philosophy? What is the style of football under Liam Racine? I think it's brave. I think um, I want to dominate, I want to play out from the back, um, I want to have players in high attacking positions, I want to play with constant full width and stretch the opposition, but I also want an energy and intensity and a pressing um, without the ball. So it's a, it's a, you'll see it and, and it's clear and I think it's even last season at, at Derby with the players that we had, the, f the philosophy, the identity was clear and I, the biggest thing for me that you need to play this way is to be brave and by being brave you can speak about making tackles or headers and things like that but it's being brave to get on the ball after you've made a mistake. I don't mind players making mistakes, I want them to express themselves and show themselves and not hide from the ball and that's going to be really, really important to play the way that I want to play. Given where the team are in the, the league table at the moment, I know we're only early November, do you have the mindset that you're coming in to, first of all, deal with the relegation battle even at this stage of the season? There's no such thing as a relegation battle until March. It's a points accumulation in every league. So I can't tell you, I think the points totals of every team in this league tell you how close the league is. If you go on a run, everyone says, oh, we're three points outside the playoffs. It's too early to, to pigeonhole yourself as a team. What I need to do is help the players become consistent in their performance. And from that, hopefully we'll get positive results and, and we'll see where it takes us. You've got two big away trips as your, your first sort of uh, venture as a City head coach. Millwall, have you had a chance to, to look at them properly? Yet? Yeah, uh, watch Millwall. I think Gary's doing a fantastic job there. Uh, they're fantastic. Always have been set place. It's, it's always a really difficult place to go. And it sounds really strange. A lot of people say, oh, tough first game. I couldn't be happier that we're going there because it's going to give me a great indication of where we are in terms of standing up to a, you know, a physical battle. And, and that's really important. And I want to see us battle and fight and play with intensity, but also then being brave enough to play our way and dominate with the ball. So for me, I think it's a perfect first game and I hope the players feel the same. Liam, I wish you best of luck with it. Just a couple of quick questions for, for Tan and Louis as well. Tan, you, you've touched on it a bit, but why was this the right appointment for you? Um, again, we, as, a, as a club, since we, we've taken over, you know, we, we were trying to establish a, a club identity 
aligning with our philosophy and our our personality meaning cha our chairman's personality as you may know is is just a very nice and 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 you know football fanatic and then wants and trying to achieve his dream in a way so and i'm trying to make it happen for him so as far as the philosophy we wanted to show an entertaining football and then and and we are trying to show an entertaining football how is based on you know like players who has their ability to show it on on both ends on the on the pitch however more on the offensive end and 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 pleasing the eyes of the fans and giving them reasons to come giving them reasons to be here and be proud of the the, the their you know club so uh, we always said that the fans will be involved and to be able to get all the fans back is is basically was to to create an a, a, a philosophy so chairman and i when we spoke um about a new coaching journey we had i mean we had over 40 applicants all over the world and different levels that i don't want to get into it but in the end liam just striked out because of the the way he wanted to play and also how he presented it and then how actually he's done it in derby so and i you know, took this matter internally with our, you know, head of recruitment, other, um, uh, other, you know, coaching staff, including you know Andy as well, and and then we we took the matter to the chairman, and I said, listen, I think the way we want to play, and the way we want to be, the way we want to be known, now uh, we have the right guy, and 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 so that I I've introduced Liam to to the chairman, and after their uh, initial conversation. He hang up and he did his own due diligence, which I give him the liberty to, to do that because he's the owner of the club, he, although he trusts us tremendously. Uh, I wanted him to feel good. And in the end, he came back r very quick and he said, listen, the conversation was brilliant. And I, you know, and I, it, I will tell you actually more sincere way what he thinks about Liam if, if you, you know, if he doesn't mind. It's just, he's obviously in his business known for making you know all the uh, the P celebrity star, you know, because as a typical Simon Cowell. So, and and he said to me, Tan, I think we have someone is waiting to be. We just don't have to do too much. It's just give him the opportunity because he's gonna shine. So that he got so excited over that that conversation. So he said, I think we have a coach already. You just have to introduce him. So then, then, then I said, you know, if he's that confident, we have to make it happen. And from that moment, we, we try to, you know, make sure Liam feels comfortable with all the surroundings and circumstances and all the conditions. And then we will just, you know, introduce and come in front of us. So we have philosophy wise, we want to play attacking football. We want to play different football. Um, and we want to play a football that we, we can bring fans back to the stadium. Thanks to them, they're already coming and, you know, and eventually promote at some point of our journey. So he fits into this, then that's our decision. And then and, and we, Chairman and I, we were very, very confidently, you know, put the, put, you know, press the button to, to convince him. Cheers, Tom. Cheers. Louis, what do the players need to do to make the settling period more comfortable given some of the results in recent weeks for Berlin. I think the gaffer touched on it earlier, consistency. I think um, we're, we're a good group, we're a very honest group and, and we apply ourselves every single day on the training pitches so regardless who's in charge. Um, so we need to carry on being, being professional day in, day out, keep turning up and, and putting in the hard yards. And I think in recent weeks the performance level has certainly increased. Um, and I think in a few of those games, even though results haven't gone our way, there's been a lot of pleasing things. So. So we've got the gaffer to come in to put his spin on things and, and keep improving us and keep bringing us on and I think it'll take us on a, on a successful journey. Two final quick ones. On the coaching staff, when are you expecting to make the announcement on that? Hopefully in, a, in the incoming days, um, not too long. Um, so, yeah. So we, will, we will just proceed quickly you now. I think yeah. we're in a very good state. Yeah, we're in a good stage. So hopefully within the next couple of days. Yeah. Before Millwall? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Keep final, going with that one. The standard one for, for any manager or head coach, which you'll be used to answer about now. Any injuries? Any fresh ones? We've got a few, not, not fresh. I've obviously been aware of the squad. Obviously, um, we've got a few long term ones, and I'm looking forward to seeing those guys back as well. Uh, but nothing new to report from, from the last game. So it's a big group, um, and it's a strong group, and it's about finding. The hardest thing for me is picking a team. 
you know, I'm picking a subs bench at the moment because it's a big group of very, very good players. And obviously, I'll speak to, to Dawson and to the guys, and we'll make the decision tomorrow. Good stuff. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Hi, Liam. Hi. I spoke to somebody you know well at Derby County a few weeks ago. Uh oh. And he said to me <laughs> that you would be the most meticulous manager here since Marco Silva. Can you kind of explain what he meant by that and, and what that looks like? Depends who it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm. I'm a. De I said to the players. Um, I I'm not one for big speeches. Um, I think if you work in a way, if you work hard in anything, you end up being successful with a little bit of quality. And I'm very hard working. I study the game, um, and I think I'm quite detail orientated. So small things turn into the biggest things in football matches. And it's my job to get that point across to the players. So even today, Lou would tell you I was grabbing hold of players, moving them into certain positions if they're a yard out of position those things make a difference in the game so I think that's what you're trying to get across um, but in, but at the end of the day football is about the players it's, I can give the players the, be the best tools and the best advice and the best encouragement and, and the best tactical detail the game is about the players going out and expressing themselves so for how meticulous I am or detail orientated I am it's up to the players to go and enjoy themselves and, and that's why I said to Louis in the conversation we had today I want the players to come in and enjoy being in every day enjoy training enjoy each other's company and when you do that and smile you work harder and you're more successful you mentioned it just then about the, the group it is a big group there's a lot of players that can't even get on the bench we've seen that in previous weeks how do you go about keeping all those players on board? It's a long season. You're going to need them all at some point. Yeah. How do you keep nice. them Nice. Having, having a large squad is a, is a, when you've got quality players, it's a, it's a bonus for you as well. Because if we have injuries or suspensions, we have players who can come in. What it also does, it means that there's competition every day. You know, in training, the, the, the level of intensity today was so pleasing of training, the engagement of the players. Um, I was really, really infused with, with the first session today. Uh, for me, it's about being honest. And, and when a player's out of the team, it's telling them the reason why. And I'll always do that. I'm really open. I want the players to come and see me. If they have any issues, not just in terms of football, work, family, anything it is at all, they come and see me and we have an open conversation. And if you treat people with respect, they normally treat you with respect back. Given what you went through at Derby and, and that, that whole situation, I, I would imagine you built a really strong bond with Wayne. Have you had any conversations with him about taking over here? And Yeah, I speak to Wayne pretty much every day. I missed his call this morning because I was out on the training pitch. Um, he's a good man. And I learned a lot from him in terms of what his the pressures he's had in his career, how he's dealt with them, the pressures he had last season and how he dealt with that. I've got a lot to thank Wayne for and for also him giving me the trust to do what I'm good at. So we get on great and I'm sure he's going to do a great job in DC in, in, in the next season. Have you spoken to any other managers? You know, I know young managers particularly like to speak to so many different people to get their, their kind of shape their opinions. Obviously, you ultimately make your own decision, but yeah. you like to canvas yeah, I've, look, I've got good friends in football. Obviously, my dad was a manager. I think I was, I've been at this press conference longer than his last job at Torquay. So that's a good start. Um, you know, he's in the Guinness Book of Records. But no, I've got good people around me. But you have to take people's advice. But at the same time, you have to go with what you believe in. And I'm going to be really clear now that the way I play is different. And we will make mistakes. And it's about how we react to mistakes. But I think it's also playing this way and being brave. We're going to have a lot of success and joy. So it's about believing in the process. If there was one thing you could take from your Derby experience as a whole, mm. what would it be? Um, dealing under pressure, uh, being being adaptable, um, being able to see the good in players. You know, a lot of managers in the situation that Wayne was in and myself as assistant manager, our job was to see the good in players and make what they were outstanding at even better. And that's what I want to do here. So I, I spoke about the players that are already in the group. There may be players here that I can get more out of. And that's my first job is to maximise the players' potential that are in, that is in the building. So I'm not looking at recruitment at the moment, obviously, Tan and Lee and the guys are working really, really hard. The mo my focus is on the group of players that are here, and my job every day is to improve them. I think I'm right in thinking also you're the first BAME manager in this club's history. What kind of significance do you feel that is that can have? I think it's a shame that it is significant, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I, it's interesting, I've not thought about that once, the colour of my skin, um, but I just want to, it's not about that, it's about me. Um, showing myself in the most positive light and if other people who look like me because I had Chris Hewton and Chris Hewton was a huge role model to me and maybe made me believe I could be a manager because he did it so if there's other younger coaches out there that see me as someone that gives them motivation to do that then great and hopefully we'll get to a point in, in history where you're, the colour of your skin or your religion or your culture it doesn't matter it's about who you are Yeah, and just finally on this bit um, if you've got one message for the supporters who were obviously 
I've been waiting for a while to find out who the manager is going to be. What would it be? It's just that um, I'm just so happy to be back and I hope I do them proud. I understand the demands of this football club. I understand the history of the city and, and we will play every single game, whether we win, lose or draw, giving 100%. And that's all I can ask for. Well, thanks, Lou. Thank Lou, you. just a quick one for yourself. I guess it's, it's been a difficult few weeks with the change we've shot to go and Andy not quite knowing what's going to happen. How good is it for the playing staff now to have clarity on what's, going to, what's happening going forward? Yeah, again, um, that's for sort of for these guys, Tan and, and the owner, to, to make a decision on, on who they want in charge. And obviously, we're delighted that we, we have some clarity now. But that's that's not for us guys. Again, we, we have to turn up to training every day. We have to keep doing the right things. And and regardless of who's in charge, we have to apply ourselves in in the manner in which we have done. And like I say, the lads are um, very excited about the appointment. It's the one training session today with him. Um, and the common thing coming off the um, off the training pitch is how detailed he is, how much he wants to improve us in, in such a short space of time. And the lads will be on board as 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 we would be anyway. But like you say, somebody that has uh, the amount of passion he has for the club, um, the ideas he has, and um, yeah, the lads uh, the lads are forward looking forward to it. Liam said that Millwall is the perfect away game. How, it's huge, isn't it? How do you view that one? Yeah, of course. Um, again, he, he touched on he wants to see the mentality and. See, I've been in the group long enough to know to know what that is, um, and the lads will be will be bang up for it as we are every game. Um, but yeah, of course, Millwall away always adds that little bit extra. Does it perhaps take the pressure off? I guess this is one for both of you actually. Does it perhaps take the pressure off a little that the fact that you've not got a home game immediately and all the kind of the carry on that would be associated with that? You've got two away games where you can kind of just beg yourself in away from home before having. I think, I think that's more of an external thing. I yeah. think for us, as what's really important for me is that we focus on what's important, which is the game. At the end of the day, whether you're home or away, it's 11 men against 11 men, or in a female game, it's 11 women against 11 women. It's about do, doing your job and, and playing the best way you can. And if, you, if we do that, we have a great chance. And if we don't, we will have a very good chance because they're in good form and Gary's doing a good job. So it's not made a difference to me being away from home. It's going to be a very, very difficult game. Bro, thank you, thank you. Liam, as you mentioned earlier, it's been a, it's been a long process to get to this point. Mm. So, how, how much we know the games you've been at? How much beyond that full city have you been watching in this time? I've watched every single game. Obviously, I think that's a standard. That's just not me. I think every single manager should should would and should do that. Um, what's been great in this process is the amount of conversations I've had with Tan uh, and and the chairman, um, and and that means that when you walk in, you kind of you you know what to expect. So today, I, I actually went to the training ground yesterday to have a look around and get reacquainted with it. It's changed a lot from from my time as a player. But as soon as I walked in this morning, I felt like I was at home. And that's a really, really nice place to be. And I think sometimes you can rush to make a managerial appointment or you can take your time and make sure you get it right. And I think we know each other so well already in the, in the conversations we have, which gives me so much confidence moving forward. So in that process, did you have to sort of convince yourself that you could work with the, the squad or was it just about the alignment you were talking I think about? it's 100%, it's everything. I think I'm not the type of person, um, look, I'll, I'll be honest, I've had, offers from abroad, I've had offers from in England that I, that I haven't taken up. It, I think it, for your first permanent job as a manager, you have to make the right decision. And and the more I spoke to Tan and the guys, the, the happier I was to make this decision. So it's a two-way thing. You know, you should never take a job if you don't think you're going to be successful. And I would definitely wouldn't walk into this football club that I love thinking I'm not sure about taking this job. I'm fully focused on it and I'm, I'm fully positive that we're, we're going to be successful. And there's, there's knowing the team on the field and then there's knowing them off it. So how important is the fact that you've got Dawson alongside you to sort of fill you in on that, that side? Yeah, but it's not just that I want to get to know the players myself on a personal level. Um, and Dawson has been brilliant. That's the first thing he said. He said, Liam, I don't want to give you my opinion on things because I want you to see it with fresh eyes. And sometimes having fresh eyes is a, is a benefit. So it's finding the balance. I think someone made a great point with a question about having that week away together and having a mini pre-season. And I really, I'm, I'm someone who does. I want to know everything about the players, not because I don't trust them. I, you need to know a player. You need to care, show you care about a player to get the best out of them and I can't wait to get to know this group and the signs are really good from training today the engagement of the group the conversation I have had have been really positive and I want to get to know every single one of them 
So what, what's your assessment at this stage of the, of the tools you've got to work with in this squad? I think, like I said before, there's some really there's some real quality in the group, especially technically, and, and there's games. Uh, the Rotherham game was one of, the, I think, the best performances in the championship from any team this season that I've seen. So it's there. It's just, can we do it on a consistent basis? You know, and I think confidence, especially at home when you can see the first goal, it can just wait. I've been a player. You, you, no player's perfect. And when you lack confidence, you can start making mistakes. So for me, it's to build the confidence. And the best way you can build confidence confidence is to give organisation and everybody knows their roles exactly and that's been my job today and that will be my job tomorrow going into the Millwall game. And obviously you've, you've been through this process before at Darwin, you've seen Wayne do it, you've done it yourself. How, how easy is it to, to just get your ideas over in the space of 48 hours? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I think that's the, that's the test of a coach. You know, um, hopefully it, it works. And if it doesn't, we've, we'll keep working and we'll get better and we'll improve. So, you know, I'll do the very best I can in a short space of time to make a difference. But at the same time, we have to have a realism about the situation. But I've got full faith. Is this group of players good enough to go and win at Mill 100%? And that's what we'll be aiming for. I don't know if this is one for you off the town, but had a couple of uh, temporary coaches taken on board by Andy Dawson. Just wondering what's happening with Robbie Stockdale and Barry whether they're staying on. Oh, no. May I? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, Andy, I, I wanted to, you know, like, especially thanks thank to Andy, you know, for being the, the club man and then put the club ahead of him and then taking up a, a responsibility in such way as an interim coach and then and, and help us get through this process with Liam and smoothly, in my opinion, and also, like, probably your opinion as well. So Andy is someone special for, for the organization, for me and for for the chairman as well, because we've always, you know, value loyalty is so high that, that, that he will always be with us. And, and thanks to Liam, he was always within the combination of coaching staff uh, and, 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 and knowing the fact that they were not only unit before, that they could be a unit now with Liam's, you know, also trusted confidants coming in on board. Uh, Robbie was uh, was is also someone. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I've I, I need to. Uh, when you compliment people, y you always often be ca try to be careful, which actually they deserve more. So you don't want to just fabricate the situation for someone who came in as as a volunteer basis and took up on this kind of a pressure and and within a couple of weeks um i've i have nothing but you know massive appreciation to him but he was always with us for for temporary temporary basis so he knew it and we know it but how he worked with us you know relentlessly for this period i have to say thank you to him so much but moving forward roby will not be with us uh, but that being said in terms of full time he will not be with us we will always you know get get his opinion and and be in touch with him and and and, and i have to say like you know it's it's it was un, such an unselfish support that that robbie you know had given us so like i have to say extra thank you for him and liam's obviously a different profile to pedro martins i think it's fair to say yeah. as this process went on did the fact that he's got experience in english football did that become <coughs> more of a priority or like you said about his connection with the club is that sort of lower down the list yeah but yeah and no so he's you know Liam's experience wasn't in English football experience wasn't the deciding factor it was just a another box that was being ticked off so and as far as Pedro Martins or any other candidate it's just p pointless to talk about it at this minute thanks for the question anyway but He's now our, 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 you know, Gaffa. He's now our manager. So any other candidates in the past, um, obviously we had, we hadn't, and the chairman didn't find himself in a full, full, you know, page. But having said that, I want our fans to understand also, we have an international, uh, uh, um, a network that we genuinely like keep in touch anyway, like coach friends, footballer friends, a lot of presidents, a lot of owners. Chairman in, is, has been in, in this business voluntarily for 30 years. So like it's it's for him to just pick up the phone and have, you know, discussed football matters with coaches and etc. is just so natural. But what's in the past is in the past. So it's we're just opening a new page and clean page for Liam. And we trust them. We're behind them, and then we're, we will support them as yeah. as an ownership, management, and all the other parts of this club, hundred percent. Because he said he would he would like to get hundred percent from the players. 
we'd like to get 100% from our manager. So we should give 100% to the manager so, so that he can just actually find a way to succeed. And I'll ask this to both of you, but I'll ask Tom first, if I may. Um, as we said, you've, you've definitely not rushed this process. You've been very careful in, in identifying what you want. But was there a thought in the back of your mind that you wanted to give Liam at least a couple of games before that World Cup break to just familiarise him, himself with, uh, with the club? I think we've given him the liberty, actually, in that way. But to, to answer your question, is he's, he was already watching us. He already knew yeah. us. He already identified us. And then actually, when we spoke, he brought his opinions and what's happening with us come together. That was too impressive for me. So that I feel like I've, I'm speaking to uh, uh, Liam in, in a way that it, I can tangible, you know, like I can, his ideas was just, feel, I could feel it more than a, more, I can touch it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's when I actually brought the, the matter to, to the chairman. And I'm the one who takes time. He's the one very quick decision maker. So, but immediately he said, this is it. You know, it's just that we have a, a young coach uh, here and in, in, in ready for this challenge and we should give him that opportunity regardless and I, from that point I don't think you guys even talk any other things they didn't even they didn't even negotiate I had to do that part <laughs> myself, yeah. Excellent, good and just just um, so Louis if I may um, what do you feel you've, you've gained as a squad from this this period under Andy Doss how do you feel I presume you feel you're in a better place for it yeah of course I'm um, Again, I go back to the professionalism of, of the squad, um, regardless of who's in charge, but I feel the performances in, in recent weeks have been pleasing. Again, not, not got the points on the board we would like as a group um, and as a club, but that's that's something that we'll, we'll look at doing moving forward. Um, we we now have a, a manager that's come in and he's, he's given us a clear way of, of playing. Um, he's sort of ironed that out from, from day one, being today, and, uh, and that'll continue to grow. Um, I think it's very important we have clarity as a group, what, what he expects from us and, and what we expect from him. Um, and I feel once we have that transparency, we'll, we'll only get better as a group and, and kick on. And obviously you'll have been in this position before in your career with a new manager coming in. As, as a group, is it just sort of quite revitalising to, to know that a manager's coming in without preconceived ideas of the, of the group and you'll all be judged not on reputations but on what you're doing in training? If we yeah, of course. I mean, the, the gaffer touched on it there. It's a clean slate for everybody at the club. Um, he says he's, he's coming in with fresh eyes and, 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 and sees everyone as equal, which is the way it should be. Um, and like I say, it's down to us lads to, to put in the performances, tra train right every day and, and sort of put yourself in, in the picture where, where you, you sort of want to be playing, you want to be starting. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions? Can I ask one? You, in what way are you playing differently? <laughs> That's nice a good question. You, yeah, nice to see you too, Baz. You always yeah. ask the best questions when I was here last time as well. Yeah, I just think um, I think I think now I think in football um, I look at I, I love football I study the game I think um, the clubs who are brave in the way that they play and have belief in their philosophy go are more um, successful in the long term and that takes time but also you can get results in the short term you'll see I, I, I want to play out from the back I want to have the ball I want us to attack in a different way um, that not many teams in the championship play in that way I'm not saying that my way is better than anybody else's but it's the what, what I believe in so I will play in a different shape than, than other teams do but it's what I believe in and I think if I can get the players and I'm sure I will enjoying what they do and believing in that process I think it could be really really exciting for the football club and have you got the squad to do that from what you've seen you've watched all these games are the players here to do it, what you is it, I think at every football club if you give players freedom within a discipline and a structure and organisation, they'll, they'll surprise you and they'll get better and better and better. And that's what I want to do here. I want to give the players here the confidence to play, the confidence to be brave, to take the ball, to work hard, but actually to be expressive. And, and that's what I believe in. That's what I believe coaching is, is getting the best out of individuals. That makes you better collectively. So it will be something different. It will be challenging, but at the same time, it's something I believe in. And I hope the fans will enjoy watching us play.